The first three questions give you the base by which you can start to think about uh, curriculum. Now, I want to show you a specific way to actually work with the curriculum variables I've given you so that you can start to combine them together. Now, we have kind of done it like this in the three videos. In the first video, we looked at uh, the uh, relationship between the everyday and the specialized and whether it was open or solid. We then moved into the specialized world in its own term and we looked at the relationship between different types of specializations, like for example the relationship between science, English, maths and art. But then in the third question we went even sharper and we took a look inside disciplines, inside specializations, at their sub-specializations and how they relate to each other. Now I would like to show you uh, a different way of conceptualizing this uh, and it's really important because it forms one of the basic logics of the book itself. And to do that I want to start with the everyday specialized relationship. Now notice what I've done over here. I've, I've given you a situation where I've taken the everyday specialized, I've called it a variable. I've called it something which can change and that's something which can change. It can change in one of two ways. It can either go into an open state or a solid state. So what you can see is you have one variable and you have two states, open or solid. Now just hold on to that for a second and, and look at the second situation where what you're doing is you're now working with two variables. Now notice that when we work with two variables, what I'm doing is I'm adding the second variable onto the first one, just like I did in the, in the earlier picture you saw. So firstly, you have the everyday specialized being either open or solid. That's your first variable with two states. And now we have a situation where we're working with another variable, the relationship between specializations. And there, the relationship can, the states can be open or solid as well. Now, the key thing I want to get you to do is to work upwards through the picture to start to understand the variations produced. There are, in total, four possible states uh, involved in this picture. And the four possible states you don't look at by reading off the top across. You don't go, oh, look at the top. It's open, solid, open, solid. Those are the variables that are really dealing with specialized, the specialized relationship to other specializations. What you do is you start at the bottom and you work upwards. So if you go to the left, you start off with the everyday specialized relationship being open. You then enter into the specialized, specialized world. And there, if the everyday specialized is open, the specialized specialized can either be open or solid. The same thing happens when you work with the option or the state that the everyday specialized relationship is solid. Once you've uh, worked that out in terms of educational analysis, what you then do is you then ask yourself, well, what about the relationship between specializations? And there you can again say, well, either it could be open or solid. So if you read upwards, you have four options tracking along upwards, which give you the, the, um, the possible states of the educational analysis at that point when you are working with two variables and two states. Now let's take that along to uh, the three basic variables that we were working with in terms of curriculum, the first three questions. And notice what I've done now, I've added the relationship uh, inside specializations between sub-disciplines. And notice at this point that you uh, have eight possibilities. And again, do not read the eight possibilities across the top. Start at the bottom and say to yourself, if the everyday specialized is open and the relationship between specializations is open, that means that you have two possibilities between sub-disciplines. They could either be open or solid. And again, run through it. If the everyday specialized is open, but the relationship between specializations is solid, that still gives you two options between sub-disciplines, either being open or solid. And so you run through the system where you generate the options. Uh, and what you can see over here is you now have three variables, everyday specialized, 
relationship between specializations, the relationship inside specializations, and you have two states. And that gives you eight options. Now, it's a very basic way of thinking, which is probably unfamiliar uh, to a lot of us doing educational analysis. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to cement it by giving you uh, an example of how the eight uh, possible pedagog, uh, the eight possible curriculum spaces operate uh, through examples. So let's start off with the situation where we have the relationship being solid in terms of all three variables. Now notice by solid I've drawn a solid line. Um, a open line will be a broken line. Now I think we're very familiar with this kind of a, a curriculum situation. What happens is it's very tightly um, specialized. There's no everyday allowed. Secondly, it's very focused between specializations. It's very clear that you're doing the actual subject. And within the subject, it's also very clear that you're doing the subdiscipline. And the example I've given is teaching for a chemistry exam. And I think that one's pretty easy. But the trick is for you to start to think about the other seven variations that are possible. So let's start playing with it. What would happen if the everyday specialized relationship was open but you still kept the relationship between specializations and subdisciplines closed. Well, we can imagine a similar situation in chemistry, which is a, a, um, a very tight definition within a subject of its subdiscipline. Um, and we can imagine the teacher saying, now go home and actually play around with some chemicals. Go play around with your cleaning fluids and let's see what it produces. And there you can see a situation where you've opened out chemistry to the everyday specialized and you have a particular um, uh, possibility space in terms of the way that curriculum operates. So in the third option uh, what we're working with is we're working with a situation where you tighten the line between specializations but you keep everything else open. Now it becomes a stranger space to actually think of uh, because what you've done is you've kept the specialization itself clear but you're allowing integration both at the level between the subdisciplines and at the level of the everyday specialized. And yeah, you can have a situation where you take a natural science, you take an actual subject in its own terms, you keep it separated from other subjects, but then what you do is you ask the students to both use the subject to understand the everyday world and you do it in such a way that you're not asking them to discriminate between the different sub-disciplines actually involved. Now the fourth option is a uh, one which I find actually uh, very difficult to imagine because what you've done in this one is you keep the relationship between the everyday specialized open, you keep the relationship between specializations open as well and at the same time you tighten the relationship between subdisciplines in a subject. Now, there's, there's always a situation when you work logically uh, with combinations that certain combinations are far less likely than others uh, just because of the nature of the way the logic between the combinations work. And if you have a situation where you've already opened out the line between the everyday and the specialized and you've allowed between specializations to also be open so you're not defining your subject clearly it makes it very hard at that point to actually have a situation where you keep your sub disciplines uh, highly separated within the subject how do you keep your sub disciplines separated when at the same time you haven't actually uh, been clear about the nature of the specialization you've integrated the specializations it, it is kind of possible and I've, I've imagined it as a situation where you do a highly special theme for example something like photosynthesis which has a very specific sub discipline base but then you start to pursue it in terms of, for example, what, what people have written about the nature of uh, light in uh, English and you start to pursue it uh, by getting the students to actually go home and uh, explore photosynthesis in their gardens. Now, the next option is one I think which we're all familiar with in terms of South Africa and that was the radical situation after the um, 
the revolution in South Africa where we managed to start the process of dismantling apartheid, we uh, developed a curriculum which was radically open. And we opened it at every level. We tried to make sure that the students integrated the specialized knowledge with everyday knowledge by insisting that the local knowledge in the community actually counted. We integrated between specializations by combining specializations together and, and forming more uh, general groupings uh, of uh, disciplines to study. And we did the same thing between sub-disciplines. We, com we combined them as well to form integrated themes which students could actually study. Now, uh, this, this particular combination is a situation where what you are doing is you are making the everyday specialized uh, line very solid. So you're making sure that what you're doing is actually school or specialized work. But then you land up integrating after that. And this is a situation where you take uh, a specialist theme, a theme which isn't an everyday theme, a theme which is actually specifically a school theme, but then you pursue it across specializations and between sub-disciplines. So let's say you're doing something, uh, and with kids this works uh, operates a lot, let's say you're doing something like volcanoes. When you do volcanoes, uh, you make sure that you do the science of volcanoes, you make sure you do the art of volcanoes, you make sure that you do the poetry of volcanoes, for example. Uh, now, uh, hopefully what you're beginning to get a sense of is the fact that there's the massive variety within curriculum just using the three variables and the two states. And here we have another possible option. In this option, what we've done is we've kept the everyday specialized relationship solid uh, and uh, the relationship between sub-disciplines solid. So we are doing a very specific sub-discipline and we are keeping it highly uh, specialized. But we integrate between specializations. Now, the example I've used here is synchronizing themes between subjects. And what you're doing at this point is, you, for example, with English and history, you're taking a situation where you have, uh, let's take the Anglo-Boer War. Um, now, you're keeping the focus in your sub-discipline of history in terms of South African history. You're doing the Anglo-Boer War. Um, and you're keeping the focus in English, you're doing poetry. But you make sure that you kind of create an integration between specializations, but at the same time, in the same day, between the two different teachers, the one doing the Anglo-Boer War in terms of history, and the other one doing poetry, but it deals with the people who wrote in the Anglo-Boer War. And finally, you have the option where you can work with strong um, boundaries between the everyday specialized, between specializations, uh, but then between the sub-disciplines, you actually radically open things out. And that is, for example, when you do uh, natural science uh, rather than doing chemistry or physics. Now, what that should do is it should start to give you a sense of how you actually work with um, the combinations of variables and states. Um, and that gives you one of the basic working centers of how... Uh, pedagogic or I should say how educational analysis happens.